uh, you've, been, you've been well taught um, over the course of these last four months. I've been with you almost every Sunday, uh, usually after the fact, but I have taken in almost all of the worship services and the sermons, and I'm so grateful. Uh, we have elders and staff who are able teachers. Each one is a little different. Different voices, different approach, and, um, uh, and I'm super grateful for the way that has unfolded over the course of the past season, and, and I've been walking with some of that as I've been sabbaticaling and studying and wanting to kind of carry that, that forward as well. And just, just last Sunday, Colleen Jansen uh, picked up on a thread that I, I'm, I'm pretty certain she didn't know was being pursued by our youth when they were away on retreat, which was also a thread that I have been pursuing in the course of my studies. And, it, and it's this question, who are you before God? What, what's your identity? If, um, if God were to call you in the middle of the night, what name would he use to summon you? Uh, who has he made you to be and what has he called you to do? Um, I, I've been pursuing this question through much of my life uh, and so in pursuing it freshly, recently gone back through some journals, gone back to some sort of personal mission statements, things like that that have been uh, just part of what I've done over the years. Uh, and, and I believe the Spirit was prompting three words to me that kind of seemed to fit. You, know, you, you can feed this back to me, but the three words were this, earnest, worshiper, teacher earnest worshiper teacher. I, I long to be found faithful before God with the commission that he's given me to lead you and to teach you. Sometimes I may spend too much time digging in order to prepare well because I long to be earnest. But I don't wanna just fill you with knowledge. I don't wanna just fill you with a bunch of ideas, biblical though they may be. My, my longing is that as we work our way through a passage of scripture, through a book of the Bible, uh, that increasingly you would see Jesus more clearly, that you would love him more authentically, and that you would worship him more extravagantly. That, that we would see Jesus more clearly, that we would love him more authentically, and that we would worship him more extravagantly earnest worshiper teacher. So that's my ambition as we continue um, uh, beginning this Sunday into a series in, uh, through the Gospel of John. Um, uh, one, maybe one last note on that and that would be to say that I, um, I'm gonna pick up something that I have done for years past uh, and that is a, a weekly video blog that uh, I call the 10 Minute Coach. And the intent of that is to come to the text that we've been in today and to uh, dig a little further, uh, maybe recount some things that I haven't had time to get to. Um, but the intent would be to invite you in your personal devotions uh, or in your family devotions and or your family devotions and or in your life group to come back to the text that we've been in and, and to consider it afresh. Uh, Jesus' uh, brother James uh, exhorted us to be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. And, and you will grow if you come back to what we've been in and invite the Spirit of God to, to remind you again of something that he was speaking to you when we were gathered there on Sunday in worship. And, and so I would encourage that you to pursue that. It's posted on our social media channel. It's available through our website. Um, and then the, the piece that kind of partners with that are our sermon notes. There's hard copies in the room. You can download them on your smartphone from the OEC app, from our website. But on the back of the sermon notes are some questions for further reflection and study. And, and my ambition, my desire is to make it really difficult for you not to be a doer of the word, okay? <laughs> That's just straight up confession. You know, I really, really, really long that we together would be found faithful with the things that God has been speaking to us. So some tools that are there. There are two other tools that God was prompting me concerning uh, that, that I should uh, perhaps pull out from time to time, maybe continue to pull out from time to time. And, and the one is, is the tool of music. 
Um, the other is the tool of, of theater. And so with that in mind, I, I wanna introduce you to the Apostle John. Uh, he was a, a dear friend of Jesus. He, um, his brother, younger brother to James. Together, Jesus referred to James and John as the sons of thunder. Now either that meant that they were kind of noisy when they entered the room, or more likely it means they had a bit of a hot temper, uh, at least in their younger years, until Jesus began to refine them. Um, uh, Peter, James, and John were uh, three closest companions uh, to Jesus. And they, they walked closely with him in, a, in, a, in an intimate relationship. And so friends, I think it would be helpful to you if I allowed John in, in a first person voice to introduce to you his gospel. So with that in mind, friends, uh, the apostle John. little children love one another love one another love is from God he loves you immensely and he calls you to live out that love together God is love he is holy he, he is holy and his, his love shines through the beauty of his holiness. I, I, I remind you of this. I, I, I bring prayer shawl. Ah, for years I wear this. As I pray, it reminds, reminds me a little of the, uh, the, the, the wearings of the high priest. Uh, a holy something that reminds us that God is holy, a, a kippah, hmm? it, uh, a little cap, which, which reminds my people uh, that there is always someone, something above us, uh, that the Holy One of Israel is our Father, that we are children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And as I write this gospel, I want you to see that you too are of this lineage. This is not national symbol, this is a religious symbol. This is about relating to God, who is love. And so I say, love one another. Do you recall that I wrote this to you in the letter? God is love. His, the blazing hot fire of his holy essence is love. And God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Around us there is much darkness, yes? I must be careful how I use language. Not to bring more persecution against you uh, than you've already received. It has been hard. Days have been difficult, sometimes harsh. Because of course the, the great beast, the serpent has chased the woman into the wilderness. Eh? You follow? Because she is giving birth to a child, something new. You understand? That would, the, the revelation that Jesus gave me on the island of Patmos, uh, the letters that I write, I write more more frankly, uh, 
the gospel, the gospel has many pictures for you to look at, to gaze upon, to linger, to allow them to wash over you. And I invite you to hear me because I, I write from a city like your own. I, I read to you from, from Ephesus. Here's, here's where I now live. The, the, the great agora, the, the street through Ephesus, you, you call Turkey. It, it, it described this great city, uh, third largest in the Roman Empire, uh, next only next only to Alexandria in, in, in Africa, and Rome herself. It, it, it large, it's impressive, but you need not scratch very, very deep to find that really under the surface it, it is it is a cesspool of horrific and gross immorality. Oh, one of the heads of the beast, yes? Chop one off, two more appear. Oh, these have been difficult years, glorious years, but difficult years. You see, after Jesus had died, we thought all was lost. Well, we gathered in that upper room, believing that all of our hopes, all of our dreams uh, had vanished. <laughs> but Jesus did not leave us long. He had risen from the dead, and he came to us, and before we knew it, he had commissioned us to go. To go, to, go to, to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, to the other most parts of the world. And so we went. We went to Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. Jesus wept over her. If only they'd listened. So much pain, so much suffering would have been prevented. Her destruction. But before her destruction came the murder of my brother James must be must be 60 years ago now uh, the, the murder of, of, of Stephen earnest man loving man faithful man and following that, that these murders the, the church scattered around the world you'd think it was disaster right You'd think all was lost, and yet it was, it was God's design. It was even God's grace. Because the gospel, the good news about Jesus, must spread quickly, and it did. Thomas eventually ends up in, in India. Matthew, another of the 12, he ends up in, in Africa. Peter, he, he's in Rome herself. I, I took Mary, Jesus' mother, here to Ephesus. By God's design, God's grace for the people of the world. It, it's from here in Ephesus that I write. In the beginning, what comes next, yes? You know, you know Hebrew, Hebrew scriptures? In the beginning you expect maybe God made the heavens and the earth, yes? And the earth was formless and void. You expect this, yes? How about, how about this? In the beginning was the word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. You expect this? Maybe not so much. How about this one? 
we proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. Do you see what I've brought together here? My intent is that you would see Jesus as I have seen Jesus. That you would be touched by Jesus as I have been touched by Jesus. To do this, I must take you back. Before the manger. Luke, he took you to the manger, yes? Very good. I must take you back before the genealogies. Matthew, he took you to the genealogies, yes? I must take you back even before. If you see Jesus as I have seen Jesus, I take you back to the beginning. He was there in the formlessness. He was there in the void. He was, he was there and intimately involved in the creating work. Through him, through him all things were made. because he is God. Walking among us, foolishness, say the Greeks, scandalous, say the Hebrews, salvation to any who will look to him. He's the word, I, I use Greek word logos, Logos, there are other words I could use, but I used logos. It, it, to, to the Greek philosophers, logos has idea of um, impersonal principle of, of reason that gives order to universe. Hmm. Completely inadequate for Jesus. But starting point for the Greek, come listen, come here. To us as, as students of Hebrew scriptures. See, see, I'm inviting you out of whatever narrative, whatever life story you've been in, and I'm inviting you into this story right here, the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These be your people now. I know you think you're Canadian. You're no longer Canadian. You're now Jewish. You're now people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These, these are your roots. This is your new heritage. This is the story out of which all the changes will come. All that the, the, the Spirit of God will do. He invites you in. And I invite you to hear as students of Hebrew Scriptures, we know word, the word of God is, is very important, yes? The, the word of God brings life. He speaks into being, and it happens. God speaks to his people and calls them to follow. God speaks, and things, people are healed. God speaks, and, and direction is followed. His word will go out, and it will never return void. His word goes out and it always brings back fruitfulness. Yes, yes, yes. So I introduce you. You hear my voice? Yes. I give you other voices, other people, many other people I want you to hear. I want you to hear from them. And I want you to hear seven signs that we discern, speak the truth Verify the truth we speak. Many people, seven signs, four feasts that point to one God. Maker of heaven and earth, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is the testimony that I offer to you. This is how I see Jesus. And I invite you to see him too. Have you, have you experienced Jesus? Have you been touched by Jesus? Will you reach out and touch him? 
little children. Please, follow me as I follow Jesus. A great adventure is before us. Well, you can see why I love John so much. He is... We're gonna to get to know him better. I, I don't expect he'll appear again in this form, but we'll, get, we'll see. But we'll get to know him better through his words and through his gospel as he introduces us not just his witness and his invitation into his heritage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but as he introduces us uh, to many people uh, to seven signs and to four feasts, maybe it's three, we'll talk about it when we get there, that that, that, that communicate who Jesus is. The other gospel writers, as they step into sharing the good news about Jesus, uh, they kind of eased into it, and they gave us little indications and little ideas, and they kind of let you grow in your understanding of who Jesus is, and eventually it becomes pretty obvious. John starts right out of the gate with this kind of language. So we're gonna move to the Lord's table in just a moment, but before we get there, I wanna invite you just to hear John the Apostle one more time, and then what I wanna do is introduce you to one, one of the voices he brings in support of what he has seen and invites you to see. So, so I read this earlier, uh, Gospel of John, chapter one, verse 16, where John says this, he says, out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given, grace in place of grace already given. What does that mean? Now a principle that we're gonna, we're gonna encounter over and over again will be that the context is extremely important. So let's just read the next verse and it becomes evident what he's talking about. Here are the two verses, verses 16 and 17 together. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Do you see that? The law is a grace. We don't often think about law in that way. We often think of it as, as restricting or as binding, but it was a grace, John tells us, that was given to us and now Jesus comes through Jesus a grace upon grace already given. A couple of ways that could be interpreted. Scholars like to kind of wrestle with is it grace instead of grace or grace built upon grace? Subtle, maybe significant. We can talk about that another time. Can you just let, let what John has for us kind of wash over us for now? Just, just hear his voice without bringing a lot of the other voices in, with, without saying, oh, but Paul says this. And just, just hear what he has to say as he walks us through his narrative, as he reveals to us who Jesus is. We've heard John the Apostle's testimony. I want you to briefly hear John the Baptist's testimony. Now, you're gonna have to be careful as you wake your way through this gospel because there are at least two Johns uh, that, that are referenced. You've heard from John the Apostle, John the Baptist. We were recently in Christmas, and perhaps you read through Matthew chapter one, and you recall how Zechariah was in the temple, had a vision of an angel who spoke to him. He was struck dumb, couldn't speak, and, and came out, and then his aged wife Elizabeth became pregnant in her senior years in fulfillment to the promise that had been made. Mary, the mother of Jesus, now pregnant by the Holy Spirit, came to visit, and do you remember what happened? Uh, the child in Elizabeth's womb leapt for joy. And, and that, was, that was little John the Baptist in there. Fast forward multiple years, he has become a prophet speaking for God just as Zechariah had been told. He's, he's often in the wilderness and, and goes down to the sea, down to the Jordan River to baptize at the very location 
that Elijah the prophet was miraculously taken up to heaven. And John is there baptizing, and so understandably people have questions, and the Jewish leaders sent representatives to him to say, who are you? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? And what's quite fascinating here is that he refuses, he refuses to be constrained by uh, their definitions. He won't, be, he won't be confined by the limitations of their understandings, their preconceptions, uh, their narrow expectations. And so he gives a very kind of cryptic answer and it dodges their questions, and his answer is this. John 1, 23, John replied in the words of Isaiah, so this is John the Baptist replying now, in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. Earnest worshiper, teacher. The voice of one calling in the wilderness makes straight the way for the Lord. This is, this is John's identity, this is his purpose in coming. He's declared it for us. He goes on and then he describes the, the name and the person of Jesus. He says in verse 26, I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Verse 34, John says this, I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. So, so we, we, we've heard We've heard from John the Apostle, he's a seer. I testify concerning what I have seen, what I have heard. We, we hear from John the baptizer. He's a voice of one calling in the wilderness. You've heard from me. This witness concerning Jesus. Consider the language that's been used here. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The word of life. The one who is eternal life. How many more exalted titles for Jesus do you need before you will respond to the invitation to follow him? The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the, the word of life, the one who is eternal life. Will you follow him? And maybe you say, but where will he lead me? I can't say for certain. For certain, I can say this. Uh, he is the word made flesh. He is the true light that gives light to everyone. And so he will lead you out of darkness and into light. That's good. And the longer that you look at him, you will see Jesus more clearly. You will love him more authentically and you will worship him more extravagantly. Bottom line is you can trust him because he is good. So our invitation in the series is come and experience Jesus together with us.